different ways in which we can use text. Now, over on the side over here, we've got the text tool. And just like if you remember with the shapes tool, the text tool's got a lot of different options underneath it. So we're gonna start with the basic text tool. Now, two main ways I can use this one is if I just click and release. Um, don't worry about the lorem ipsum, um, just start typing and it will type over that. So if you type text in here, this now becomes um, a piece of just a body of text that you can move around. Um, you can adjust the width, the height. Now, if you were to compare that to working your Word or PowerPoint, you're kind of constrained with point size. So that means that the text gets wider as it gets taller. With something like this, if we're looking to balance pieces of text out, so I've got another word here, I can start to fit things perfectly. So I can just bring that up to the same size there. I don't have to have them the same point size to make them fit in the same space. Now, just like the shapes, I can control the outline and the fill. So I can start giving this a color, simple things like that. Lots of quick techniques I can do here. I can rotate these, all the things I could do before. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that floating there. Now, if I take the text tool and this time I click and I drag a shape, it's now sort of moving me into the realms of desktop publishing. So I've got a body of text. Don't worry, it would have just typed over that as soon as you start typing. And as I move this, it'll sort of create different columns and things like that. You notice this area down here earlier on was red. So that just indicates that the text gone into overflow. There's more text in here than we can see right now. We can also type along a line as well. I'm just gonna move that over to the side over there. So if I was to create a circle, I'm not worried about the fact that it's got a black fill at the moment, uh, that's going to, because it's going to vanish in a moment. So I'm going to type on a path tool and I'm going to click on the path. You see when I come down here, it's just highlighting path. Would help if I could spell. Okay, so I've got the word circle. What I can do now with all this text as well is I can very easily control the font size So on my screen just down here, I've got font size. You can see as I make this bigger, this will circle around. I can change the direction of the font. Also, if I take the this here as well, I can change the size of it. That reduces the font size at the same time. I can still control everything I controlled before. And so on. I can also, if you remember using the pen tool, so I can use my pen tool. and I can create a path like that and I can again this here indicating but there's more text there than I can see so I've got two choices here I can make this bigger and then I need to just bring the font size down remember like shapes it will remember the last um, thing you did with text so if you've typed to the sort of if you've set it to a very large font it's going to remember that font size Okay, so that's typing along a line. One final thing we're gonna look at with text, and there's a lot we can do with text. Um, but I'm just gonna go back to the type tool. And I'm just gonna create, most of the time with poster design, you just wanna click once. Okay, so. Let me create this. By the way, fonts, I can change the fonts down here in the character. But if you go up to type and you go to font, you'll actually see what the fonts look like, which is much more useful. So I'm going to choose quite a bulky font. I'm after the stencil one. My computer's just catching up with me. There we go. Now, 
What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the gradient tool, but I can't use the gradient tool at the moment on this because it's it's still text, so I can just control these two. So by clicking the gradient, it doesn't do anything. So what I need to do is right click and I'm going to click on this one here, create outlines. So this has now changed this from a font to a piece of graphics. So to just show you what I mean, you can see now it has all the different handles. So if I wanted to, a good way of creating your own sort of personalized design is you can just start going in and playing around with a different font. You can choose a font you like and just change it slightly. Uh, just re-centering the screen with Command and Zero or Control and Zero. But what it means now, because it's a graphic, I can start using... Oops, didn't want to do that just yet. I can start using the graduated tone. So what I want to do is apply the same thing to all of this. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to my graduated fill. I'm on a linear fill here, uh, but I'm going to change the angle by 90 degrees. So I'm just going to type 90 in this box down here. And that's just bought it like that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce some new colors along here just by clicking I'm going to put dark blue there. I'm going to spend too long. I'd normally spend a bit longer on this. And just by bringing these in here, I'm just going to make it look like I've got a bit of a light sheen. Normally I bring a couple of colours in here, um, but I think you get the idea. Now one of the disadvantages of doing this is I can no longer spell check anything. By the way, remember Illustrator does have a spell check feature built in, but it won't automatically underline something in red if you've made a spelling mistake. So just be wary of checking your spelling and don't do this convert to outlines until you've made sure that your spellings are correct. So just to recap, the main thing we're going to be doing is just clicking once with the text tool. That gives us much more control over what we do. But we can also type text along any line and we can fit text to any shape as well. So just like we did here, if we wanted to look at sort of magazine articles, desktop publishing, and I could have brought in a curve to this or something like that as well. Good.